Hello everyone, this is Bradley. So today we're going to remake the animation for November 2021 Prompt 8 Blue. Last time we made a rainfall animation with all these kind of particle splash. This time we're going to do almost the same thing, but just in a different form animation that we're going to do this ice or crystal attack. So let's just start. So here we're in Blender, let's create a cube. I'm still going to use the preset uh, I made for my geometry notes so you can download them for free from the link in the description and the people do ask is that actually possible to make a tutorial without all these kind of presets because it may not be good for learning it's possible but uh, it's not a really beneficial because it will definitely lengthen the amount of tutorials uh, it will have tons of nodes being added into the node tree most of them will be repetitive function it will be difficult to follow. That's why I do not uh, really think about that. And it's not a really realistic for my working. So I can do that, but it's it's difficult for you and for me. Okay, so now we created a, a we model a kind of crystals with subdivision and decimates. Technically speaking, we should not really model anything with by hands uh, within November. However, as a video tutorial, it will definitely be faster if we do this by hand. But we can definitely switch them to nodes, but it's not a kind of realistic. So let's scale up this plane. Another thing I want to make sure is I apply the scale of our crystal. So let's name that as a crystal. Okay. So our plane, let's lock this geometry. And I would like to point distribute. So we can set the amount, so 400, something like that, and then take a point instance, take the object info, take the crystal so that we, that we can instance our crystal. Okay, so this is how it looks right now. Have I actually applied the scale? Yes, I applied the scale. It's still big. Okay, fine. Uh, so this is how it looks right now. So what I want to do is that I want uh, the right side to be small, left side to be big, and the right side should be less, uh, should be very dense, while the left side should be less dense. So here in this case, we need to control the amount and control the scale. Uh, usually what I do is using the directional fold, but recently I made a better option by using this bounding box fold. So let's just subdivide our plane. This might sound to be very odd because it may seem kind of nothing to do with the subdivision of plane. However, to evaluate all this kind of fall, you need a geometry because this is geometry loss. All the evaluation is based on the geometry. So once we have this fall, technically speaking, we can control this minimum and the maximum. However, since I'm using this value to two place, so let's use the map fetch. It's kind of very unfortunate how this kind of interpolation is being constructed because in animation nodes, this is definitely more kind of convenient. And actually, if you plug that to scale image, you can see the effect. Okay. Uh, I probably want to go the opposite direction, so let's just flip a fourth. Uh, another thing is this map range to control the amount. So the maximum should be maybe the lowest 30, minimum should be 800, who knows. So something like that. So we can see the less dense, dense part. So let's take the 16,000. Okay, so this is not bad. We can also increase the minimum density so that we see all these kind of particles. We can also take a float curve so that we know how this kind of scale is being distorted. Okay, so something like that should be good enough. We can tweak all this kind of setting in our free times, but I'm going to move on with the rotation uh, because rotation is really important to make everything good. You might think it directly plug this rotation, but it does not really change anything because it's working on the normal. Anyway, so here what I want to do is I'm going to take the empty because it will be better if we can visualize where our object is looking at. Uh, so let's take the object info and take the align 
ruler to vector. I think starting from 3.1, it will be renamed as align rotation to vector. But anyway, so let's take this controller. This controller is really just an empty object. And plug the location into vector, plug the rotation into rotation, and take the relative. And if I change the location, you can see how it has been goes. The ultrasound crystal is looking at my object. Uh, here, let's take a vector mask. I've explained the align ruler to vector nodes and why it behaves in certain kind of situation. So I'm not going to repeat the process again. So here, let's take a negative one. Uh, probably not really working. Okay. So negative half, something like that, and then it starts to look nice. They're looking towards all sides beyond my empties. So this is the way to control. You can have more kind of precise control so that the end is erecting and the other is lying down. But I think these are all kind of story that you can deal with in your free time, sort of things. Okay, but uh, I think I will just uh, move on in this step, probably. Let's clamp so that we can have a kind of better and nice result. Uh, since we're using a float value, so it will be the same in all three dimensions, you can also make it more complicated by using a combine. So I see these are another story. Uh, another thing I would like to do is to rotate everything on the axis because now it's too obvious that we're working with the same crystal. So let's rotate a little bit. There is a new node, which is called a plane rotation. So you add them, it will just be fine. It basically just rotate everything on according along with the axis 360 degree. So you get some kind of results. And right now I will just cut the beam done for the moment. Uh, we can also decrease the amount. There are so many things that you can actually tweak. And it's very difficult to discuss from case by case. Okay, so once we have this, let's move. Let's move on. Uh, let's. I just want to. <clears throat> now we can move on. I just want to mention again that uh, we can actually use this directional fall for our uh, any kind of math to take that into multiply. And if you plug this fall and then manipulate the uh, direction, then you can actually have a animation. So here I went to the wrong direction. So this is how this animation goes. Okay, you can also use the proximity fall for whatever stuff. Uh, in this case, we are going to use the delay fall, but the uh, we are going to use that a little bit differently. So here we are going to create a new system. Let's create a grid. And I probably want to move this grid. So let's take a parenting node so that I can have an empty. So this is the particle. Okay. And uh, select our particles. Then you move this grid to somewhere. Let's uh, increase the scale. Oh, I need the uh, particles. Okay, so now it has been moved. Then I'm going to instance the particles. So let's take the point the distribute. Knowing that this amount should be essentially the same as what we had previously. So you plug the, so you expose these settings, there is an actual amount, and you plug this actual amount into this amount, so that we make sure that we actually created exactly the same amount of particles we have. And then I'm going to define the second location on this ground. So we need to transfer the attribute. Basically take the position attribute uh, from earlier. Uh, so let's take this points as a target, transfer based on index, transfer with their position, which is a vector, take the positions, because they, it's completely a match of amount, so we can just uh, transfer 
based on index. Let's take a set position. Basically, what we want to do is to make sure our object falls down to the second position. So if I plug this attribute into the position, this is what we have. But definitely, we want to morph that. So we take a mix vector. You can also use mix RGB. There's uh, nothing wrong unless otherwise indicated. Okay. And uh, if we plug this factor, then you can see this result. Okay. And here, let's take a delay fall. By plugging a time info into this time. So make sure this factor is one so that it correctly reflects our time was on the timeline. So let's take that to maybe 1000. Uh, and immediately you should be able to see this animation. I want uh, everything being delayed randomly. So I untick this box and make sure that the actual amount or whatever stuff goes into the uh, random index maximum. So let's take a point. Or you can take this uh, line as well because they're essentially the same amounts being linked. Okay. So once I have this amount, then you can see how this actually goes. Uh, it's also possible that you create a gradient using directional fall or whatever stuff. I think there is nothing really wrong. But uh, yeah, anyway, it does not really matter. Okay. So once we have more for this, we need this time to help control the growth of our particles. So this node tree may look kind of a little bit weird right now because we are doing things in different order, but we can manage them so that you can actually realize that this is a parallel tree at the same time. Okay. So that we can feed this information of our delay fall into somewhere in the linkage. Previously, we've already made a directional fourth and a mass node so that we can have a fourth value to control the scale of our crystal final result. Here, let's just use this time, time socket to replace that directional fourth. So we need to construct a new fourth from this new time. Previously, we've already made this directional fourth and this mass node so that we can use a fourth value to control the scale of our final crystals. So in this case, like just uh, mapping around these values, we have this kind of whatever animation. Okay, so now we need to use this new time to construct a new fourth. So we need to make sure that we transfer this attribute because they are working on different geometry. So the value might be different if we are not transferring attributes, but rather directly use the linkage. So. Let's take the transfer attributes. We take this point as the target, and we take the time, and finally I'm transferring based on the index because they have the same counts for the particles. Okay, so with this being done, let's take a map range so that we can actually make sure the delay. So I want this duration. So this maximum will be the duration. And then we plug but we actually replaced the directional fold that we created earlier. So now I can say goodbye with this directional fold and just recover the linkage. Okay, so now we do not really see anything uh, specifically. Actually, we need to join the, these two geometry together so that we can actually see both of them and plug that in. So now I have all these kind of particles and once they reach the ground, everything has been grown. Okay, and you can tweak all these kind of values. So this is also a duration. You may take that to five frames. This is also another duration, talking about how much time of how many frames for a particle to land on the ground. Okay, so this is kind of idea. Uh, and uh, I think the particles or this kind of points clouds is not being rendered by EV or cycle right now. So we have to give some actual particles. So let's point into this. I think I'm just going to use the, the same crystals that we have. And we need to align them to the final rotation. We know previously we transferred the end location for this kind of particles to land. And here, let's just take a align Euler to vector. And I'm going to take this vector V 
plug that to Z and plug the rotation to rotation. It does not really work very well, and this is exactly the same as we mentioned previously, that we need a vector mass to offset its position. So take a subtract, take the position. So now they actually look into the right place. Uh, here, let's just take a randomness so that I can change the skills. So let's take a 0 0.1, 0 0.4, 0 0.2, and then if I play this animation, and something like that, this is, this is good. Okay. Uh, and I definitely want all these kind of blades to disappear once they land on the ground. Okay. So, here what we do is that we control all this kind of movement based on this delay for factor. And I'm going to take another factor to control this is scale. So we remap the same form but in a different scenario. So let's take a float curve. Actually I've discussed the similar kind of concept in all these kind of particle tutorials. They basically mean the 100% the same thing. So it's uh, actually you just reverse the order and I'll probably change that. So now let's take a look. So we have all these kind of crystals. They're on the ground, they disappear. Okay, so something like that, and then we finish this animation. It might be a little bit chaotic and overwhelming, looking at all these kind of nodes, especially I do not organize the tree very well. But if you follow through, then you probably will be able to understand every part of what I've done. If you have any question, you can contact me from the Discord. Uh, all these kind of links are provided in the description. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'll probably see you next time. Bye-bye.